Yeah. So uh, looks like we're going to do um, you know Scarlet versus Gray, but that'll mostly be offense versus the defense, so that um, we can you know rotate the way we need to rotate. Um, and we're in pretty decent shape, but you know um, we want to make sure that you know we have enough depth. So. The plan is to, um, you know, ones versus ones, twos versus twos. Um, the first couple drives with the ones will be uh, thud, uh, but everything else will be li uh, will be live. So when the twos are out there, and after the first couple drives with the ones, um, you know, that'll go right to right to live, um, and then we'll play four quarters. Um, might be running a little bit in the fourth quarter or the second half, but um, the goal is to get these guys out there and and uh, and be live. Um, you know, get them. In front of a good crowd, um, you know it's supposed to be a great day. Uh, I think we're, um, you know, north of 50,000 seats sold so far, which for midweek is is a pretty good number as it's trending. But uh, hoping to get even more on Saturday should be a great turnout and a great opportunity for our guys to play in front of a good crowd. As it relates to the quarterbacks, you said recently you were reflecting on 2018 yep. and talking about how you needed transparency at the end of the spring. The circumstances are a little bit different this year, but what are those, what's that conversation like at the end of this year? Well, it's, uh, it's changed a little bit um, in that, um, so Devin actually uh, had a procedure done today on his, on his throwing hand on his finger. So uh, he's not going to be available to play on Saturday. He will be throwing again real soon, um, but, but he won't be able to actually uh, play in the game on Saturday. So, um, you know, the, the other four quarterbacks will play. Um, really important for Kyle and Tristan to get out there and, and compete. Um, but, you know, I, I think there's been really good quarterback play, um, you know, this spring. There's been a lot of, you know, ups and downs along the way. Um, and so, you know, we'll kind of see how Saturday goes and then take a look at the spring and go from there. Uh, right behind him, Dylan Davis. Dylan, is that just in general, like, are, do you think that you would do this, but you'd be further along in that decision? Do you think one guy would have started to elevate himself? Are you content with where that's at right now going into it? I know you wanted to have somebody. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, w it would be nice to have, um, you know, have it be black and white. I, I can't sit here and tell you it is right now. I think they've both done really good things. I think there's things they both have to improve on. I think if they were sitting right here, they'd both tell you the same thing. I don't think that there's um, there's no games or no agenda here. Uh, it's, you know, two guys competing, and, and one day one guy has the upper hand, the next day the other guy might have the upper hand. And those reps have been split up evenly. You guys have seen in practice. We've been really making sure we do that. Um, so... You know, they, they know that there's things they need to work on. There's things that they've done well. Um, you know, I guess this is practice, uh, I guess, 13, right? And um, that's, that's, you know, it's still not a ton of practices. You get, you know, double that in the, in the preseason. So um, we'll keep building, keep growing. And, you know, you're just never, how, never sure how these things shake out anyways. I guess we know we've, in the past, there's times we needed two quarterbacks, three quarterbacks, whatever it is. And, um so I, I think after the season two or after the spring, we'll go through, take a look at the numbers, you know, who grade out a champion, uh, the completion percentage, those types of things, too, that'll help us. Um, but, you know, for, for Kyle and Tristan, great opportunity on Saturday to, to put it on the field. Because ultimately, you can say that it's the same. It's not, you know. It's, it's just not the same being, in the, being here and practicing in front of just a small group as opposed to being in the stadium. Ryan, you, you just said the, the Dwayne and Joe thing. Now an injury happens to the hand, which happened to Joe in 2017. Is that like, did that go through your mind as well? Where I now, I, yeah, I mean, I, I I hear what you're saying. I, I think that situation, um, you know, that happened during the fall, and so that really set Joe Joe back that entire fall, and then allowed Dwayne to play in the rivalry game and and play in that game and help us win that game, and then it kind of. Um, and then it turned into a battle in the spring. Um, this one's different. You know, Devin's been practicing, you know, the majority of the spring. Uh, we'll miss a couple practices here and be right back at it. So it's more of a setback than anything else. Real quick, uh, the, sprint, uh, the uh, transfer portal opens on Saturday. Yeah. How are you guys going to be monitoring that moving forward? And do you have, like, one person that does that? And how does that go? We do. We do. Yep. Um, we have a guy on staff here, Billy Homer, who handles all that. Uh, he, he identifies the guys who are in the portal, evaluates them. Um, and, and then we, you know, have a board and a list and, and things like that to, um, you know, to see if there's anybody out there that fits a need. Uh, deep right, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Rock. Ryan, the, the offensive line 
you've seen a little bit of a defensive line getting the best of them this spring. How do you plan on handling that in spring? I know that you said that a lot of it's going to be fun, but, but what you, what you, I guess what you want to see from the offensive line since you might not be going full build with it. Yeah, the uh, the depth on the D line is actually the area that we're a little bit concerned with. Just um, I think we have five defensive ends going in, and um, so that would have been hard to split them up, you know. Um, especially if one side goes for a long drive and then someone has a short drive, it'd be hard for us to to do that. So we're just gonna allow Larry to, to sub in and out, and um, you know keep those guys fresh up front. But same thing. I mean, it's another opportunity to go compete, put it on film, and we're going to grade it out and see who grades out a champion or a starter level and, and go from there. But, um, you know, the only thing that will be different, you know, the only thing is it's not like a game is the quarterback's not live. And so you have to identify what's a sack and what isn't. And our D-line's done a really good job, you know, for the most part of staying away from the quarterback, even though it gets really, really competitive. And they're going to have to do that again on Saturday, which is frustrating for them. But, um, but I think the D-line has gotten better this spring. What's your assessment been of the right tackle competition for these 13 practices? There's been some good things. Um, you know, we're, we're not there ready to name a starter right now. Uh, I don't think either of those guys have stepped up. Um, I still think at left tackle, too. You know, I, I think there's been good things. But to say that we're, you know, where we're sitting right now, you know, we can say those guys are the starters moving into the preseason. Can't do that. Um, you know, like to say that, but 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 are not there. So, um, a lot of work to be done here in the next few months. The fact that you can't say that now, is, how, how concerning is that? And, and to follow up, I guess, on what Gerd asked, is tackle a position you look at in the portal if the right person should come about? I think that's that's a conversation to have, but um, you know, we got to kind of go through and see how this next, you know, these uh, or the game plays out. See how that. That looks on film. Take the body of work, and then make some decisions from there. But um, you know, we'll we'll kind of have those conversations and see and see where we're at. Um, you know, it's, it's a delicate situation for sure. You know, and um, I mean, I, I think we believe in the guys that we have. Um, otherwise, you know, we would we say, yeah, we got to bring in a guy. I think we we believe in the guys. We know that they can do it. We're looking for more consistency. I mean, I, I think if I if you you know rewind it a year from now. Um, and I was sitting up here and we were asking about Paris at left tackle, I'd be concerned. I was. Uh, he came a long way, um, and so I know these guys can as well. I think Justin does a great job teaching technique, um, but they're going to have to do that here in the next couple of months. Uh, front row, Joey Coffin, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, when, when Justin was here in 2019 and won that competition and CJ won in 2021, when you look back on their spring games, what role did that play in, in the way you evaluated them and and ultimately led them to winning the job? Well, I remember the game that Justin was in. Um, he actually struggled a little bit early on. Um, and so we, we, I think we threw like a long ball on like the five yard line to, I think, I forget who it was. And uh, it might have been Ben Vick. Yeah, it was Ben Vick. And it kind of made the day okay because it wasn't a good day leading up to that. Um, and so, you know, that. That was concerning coming out of that game. I mean, I was concerned at night that night, thinking to myself, "All right, do we really have a quarterback here who's ready to play?" We knew we knew the talent was there, um, and so those are the things this time of year you just you know you worry about. But um, it's just another piece of the puzzle. But I think it does tell you when you know when you're in the stadium how things are going. But to think that Justin would have played the way he did that year, coming off of that spring game, you know that wasn't a great um, indication of how he played because he certainly played great. You know. Um, now, for him, uh, he had just been in the offense for a couple of months, so that probably played into it. These guys have been in the offense a little longer. Uh, Tristan, not as much, but, but certainly Kyle and Devin. So um, I just think understanding the offense, they're further along than those guys were, and CJ was at that point too. Uh, Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports. Another question about the offensive line, Ryan. Um, knowing you were losing three starters up front um, entering spring, is this about where you thought they would be? Leaving spring or almost leaving spring? Are you guys a little ahead, a little behind overall as an O line? Um, I mean, I, I think we're not crazy behind. Um, do I wish we were a little bit further ahead? Yes. Um, I think we have some work to do. That's for sure. Um, but but they but they have got better. There, there's been really good plays. There's been really good snaps. There's been great flashes. There's been good practices. But there's also been stuff that we have to get better at. So 
Well, I think it's probably the natural progression of where we are. Um, we always want to be moving along faster, though. Just real quick about left tackle. We've asked you a lot about um, right tackle. Yeah. How's Josh doing at left tackle? Has he pretty much locked that down? Uh, you know, um, he's getting there. He's getting there. I, I can't sit here and tell you he's got it locked down just yet. Um, you know, making the transition to left is different. Um, I think Josh certainly um, has the ability to do it. You can see it on film. That For him, it's just the consistency of doing it over and over again. Um, it's very different when you're the starter and you got to do it over an extended period of time than just do it once or twice. He has the ability. He's shown he can do it this spring. Um, if he can just increase the inconsistency, then he will lock it down. Ryan, we haven't seen Mayan Williams out there a lot the last couple of times he's been in practice. Just what's his status right now? Yeah, he's he's um, he'll be available probably for the first couple drives, like the thud drives on Saturday, um, and um, and so there's nothing there that's 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 a long term injury. How are you um, going to handle things with the running backs? Obviously, Trey being out, Mayan being limited. Yeah, so we'll start off in in the in the warm ups um, with a ten minute individual period. So um, you know the guys who won't be participating in the game, like Trey, won't be in the game. Um, you know Julian, Mac, Tommy, those guys will all do individual drills for about ten minutes just to get them moving around, get them going, dress them out. Um, and so you know for those guys, we'll probably have like a list of all right guys who are just flat out out. Um, you know guys who uh, are doing individual drills. And then, you know, for the most part, guys who are, are, are available to, to play in the game. Yeah. Right behind him, Andy Evans, Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Uh, yes, just uh, your evaluation of where the secondary is at compared to last year as a guy, you know, who's helping coach the people throwing against them. I think we've made great strides in the secondary. Been very impressed with um, our corners. I think Denzel is playing his best football right now. Been just impressed with his offseason, impressed with his approach every day. Um, got his hands on a lot of balls, had a huge interception in a two-minute drill the other day. Uh, Jordan Hancock has, has you know, now with a, with a full off season, and and now that he's healthy, uh, you're starting to see his potential pop. He came off of that, that really bad hamstring injury and never was quite himself last year. Um, he's somebody that we got a lot of, um, you know, a lot of excitement around. And then Davison uh, has been a great addition. You know, it's been great to see him out there. And, and compete. I think he's raising the level of everybody in that room. You know, Jair Brown has played a little nickel and corner. Uh, he has just natural talent and instincts. Uh, Jermaine's been out there, Ryan Turner. So, I mean, you know, we're starting to get a group in there that, uh, that Tim's been able to now spend a year or two with. And I think the addition of Davidson and now a year of experience in that group, you're seeing their hands on a lot more balls and challenging throws, which is really exciting. Um, you know the the safety position um, has been has been uh, much more solid. You know Lathan and and Proc and Sonny and and um, you know some of the guys back there have done a nice job. Uh, Jahard Carter was playing well about midway through. Um, you know had a little bit of an injury that'll kind of I think I don't know whether he's going to be available or not on Saturday. But up until that point, he had shown again kind of raised the level of everybody back there. Uh, so I mean it's it's year two in the system. More experience and a couple added pieces. Um, I've been encouraged. Uh, far left, Stephen Means, Cleveland Brian, do you believe in recru recruiting momentum? Is that like a real thing for you guys, or is that something we maybe make too big of a deal of? Well, I, I think um, when you start to see guys jump on board and recruit each other, um, I think that's a sign of how things are going in recruiting. I think it's a sign of how people view. Um, you know, the program and the culture and what's going on here. And I think that's probably what, what you're seeing right now. You know, when guys are coming on these visits, they're, they're getting around our players. They're getting around our coaches. Um, you know, they, they see who we are. They, they see the, the foundation of the program here. They see uh, not only a, a program that competes nationally for championships every single year, but also has a culture that, you know, you want to send your son to be a part of. And that combined with the city of Columbus, Buckeye Nation, uh, there's a lot of excitement right now, and, and like you said, there there is momentum, you know. Um, and w when I think when you when you mention that, it's probably you know some of the recruits jumping on board, and then and then recruiting the other recruits to come on because that's the great thing about committing early is that you get to actually have an impact on your recruiting class and your teammates. And um, you know, I say it all the time: how cool is that to be able to lead, you know, your your recruiting class or your side of the ball? And uh, and we listen to those guys. Because they they tell us you know the real information sometimes the recruits they they put on a different uh, you know face in front of the coaches but 
behind closed doors. They're they're real with with the recruits, and so we take a lot of their feedback back. And that's that, and just access to the program are the benefits to to jumping in early, which you know again some of the guys are doing now. People to make decisions like kids have to do it on their own. Yeah, is it nice when you can have? Yeah, yeah, it's big. It's huge. It's great for the program. It's great for the recruiting class. Um, but we always say, you know, you have to be 100% in because, you know, we don't want you going on visits and doing all these other things, that, you know, after you've committed. So, like you said, we try not to, um, you know, put a lot of pressure on them. But at the same time, we want them bad. We're competitive. Um, and, and we're getting some of the best players in the co- country right now to jump on board. practice and one side of the ball does well yeah. that means the other side of the ball didn't do well I guess on that play is kind of the basic way to look at it when you guys go back and, and watch the film and you're evaluating those plays how do you assess like okay quarterback through an interception you know do you get, you get what I'm saying how do you assess Absolutely. those types of things well, I think the first thing you got to do is uh, you got to take some of the emotion out of practice when you're competing against each other which is what we've done I think a really good job of is create a competition this spring you know, there can be, um, you know, a play that, you know, gets a lot of attention and kind of creates a lot of juice and energy on one side of the ball. Um, and then, you know, you come back and quietly the other the other group is getting a sack or uh, is throwing a long pass for a touchdown. And so you have to just identify, um, you know, what's really going on in practice um, and not get caught up in the emotion of everything. Because I think our guys have brought great energy at practice and we love that. We want that environment. Um, but as coaches, you have to identify what's real and what isn't. And, um, you know, when you're playing, you know, good on good and, you know, it gets really, really hard. I mean, how, what, like those plays, third and five, game on a line, what's the play? You know, you know, the first play of inside drill is great. And, you know, the first play of seven on seven is great. But when it's a team drill and, um, you know, we're really trying to evaluate, you know, how, how guys can, can operate in those game-like environments, that's where we're making our biggest evaluations. Um, but to your point, it, that's that's our biggest um, selling point in recruiting is that you're going against really good players on both sides of the ball. So if it becomes lopsided one way or another, then there's there's probably an issue. Uh, if we have to overcompensate schematically on either um, either side of the ball because there's just a matchup issue, then who knows, right? I mean, somebody trying to cover Marvin, that's hard, you know. Um, someone trying to block JT, that's hard. So you have to try to identify that. I mean, those those are great players. But you also need to win your set, your, your your share too if we're going to go uh, win championships and reach our goals. Um, so it's great evaluation. That's that's one of the great things about being in practice um, at Ohio State is you're going against great players and and I think that builds confidence. Like if you can do that, if you can block JT or Jack, you know, or Kenyatta coming off the edge, you feel pretty good about most of the guys we're going to play that you can do the same thing. I think that's what gave us great confidence in the Georgia game is you know we play against good players every day. You know, and, and so we went up against them. I think, you know, our guys felt like, okay, you know, we go against these guys every day in practice. And so, um, and that, but that's part of it. But to your point, I mean, if you're, if you're losing eight out of 10, that, that's not good. We got an issue here. And so you look at the trends, you go through the entire spring, and then you make some evaluations. Right next door, Rob Dispatch. Uh, culture question. Over the last decade, uh, going into spring, coming out of spring, into the season, there's always been sort of a message, whether it's chase, grind, fight. Yeah. Um, last competitive stamina. Yep. Right. What is it? Do you have something this year? I see. You know, yeah, yeah. tough love. And yeah. what does that do? Well, I think you don't want to go away from your your core values and and your culture. So ours is fight, fight to become the best version of yourself. That's not going to change. And our motto is tough love. But to your point, there are messaging and, and things that are unique to each team. Um, our our focus this entire off season and this spring has just been competition and competing, winning, and finding a way to win. Uh, it's one thing to work hard, and that's great. You know, lifting and running and training and all that. But it's another thing. You know, if I'm going against somebody else, there's a winner and there's a loser. Winner and loser. And so how do you win? When you're going up against your equal, how do you win? You can't just win with talent anymore. You have to find your edge. So that's been really the, the major focus. And, um, you know, if you come to our practice, what well, you guys have heard, some of the winner loser stuff, that, that's been a huge emphasis. How do you apply tough love? 
where, where does that, how does that manifest with what you're trying to do? Well, the, the game of football is tough. Yeah, we know that. I mean, physically tough. You know, when you stand over one of your players who has a broken leg at the 35 yard line and, you know, you got to cart them off the field. I mean, it's tough. It's tough mentally, you know, what these guys have to do in terms of preparation day to day and meetings, you know, bringing it every single day and just that, that mental battle. And then it's tough emotionally. You know, you just think about some of the emotional swings we've had here in the last, you know, six months. And, but that's the game of football and that's also life but it's certainly the game of football. You have got to be tough to play the game of football, period. But we motivate through, through love. And, you know, when you, like, who do you think, you know, who do you love the most in your life? You know, usually it's your family and close, close friends. So what would you do for them? You can kill somebody for them, right? I mean, you, you know, that's, that's your family. So there's nothing more powerful or sustainable, in my opinion, than love. And if you love your coaches and you love your teammates like you love your family, then we got a chance to really do something special. So when you hear that term love, you kind of think, well, you know, it's a, it's a different term. But what does that mean? What does that have to do with football? I think it means everything, everything to do with football. Loving the game, loving your teammates, loving your coaches. So when you combine the two of those, tough love, and that's kind of what it's all about. Uh, right next door, Pam Keith Robinson, the athletic. Ryan, in that era of the transfer portal, yeah. how do you juggle concern about a position in this time of the year, but also knowing you have a lot of time until the fall where you could get like a Paris Tech growth or Justin Fields. Up here. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's it's kind of what they deal in the NFL with, right, with the free agency and the draft. You know, it's it's the same thing we're dealing right with right now and, and making sure that we have what we need, knowing that our culture matters, our chemistry matters, our leadership matters. Um, as you guys know, we, we've been very careful to add pieces here, but we know it's a necessary thing. And so... We have to sit down at the end of spring and identify what positions do we feel good about, where do we have um, depth that we feel strong about, because we know we're going to lose guys along the way and guys are going to have to step up. So if it's you know somebody that we feel like is at starter level and we're okay there, that's great. If we feel like there isn't someone there that is at starter level, then maybe you need to add a piece. If we feel like it's a depth issue, then we'll add somebody. Um, like Tristan was a great example of that. You know, you talk about somebody who's come in and done an unbelievable job here. You know, he came in with no expectations, um, really with the plan that he wants to be a coach. And so he sat in meetings with us. He's been in staff meetings with us. It's almost like an apprentice, what he's doing right now. He's coming in as a player, but he also wants to be a coach. And so uh, what a cool opportunity for him. And something hopefully that we can build on moving forward is guys who want to get into coaching, who are quarterbacks, who can come in and, and provide that maturity, but also learn the game. And that's what he's doing right now. And he's doing a great job. But that was an area that we, we felt, you know, we need some depth there. Um, and it's hard to do, you know. And um, so that's what we look at. You know, do we have somebody to start a level? And, you know, do we have enough depth? Have those conversations. How do you calculate what is like you see somebody on the field, they're not consistently at that starter level, but they have that potential on do I risk for this potential or do I go get somebody at the portal who I know can be that right now? Well, even when you, even when you bring somebody in, you don't really know. You think you know. It's like in recruiting, if we knew all the time, then we wouldn't be worried about this. You know, it's like you try to do the best you can to evaluate it. Um, but again, we put so much, probably more than anybody else in the country, into the guys who have been in the program for a few years. And, and that matters. They understand the culture. They've been through it with Coach Mick and all that. And so we'd rather not. But sometimes there's times we feel like you know, we need to, then we will. All right, Clay Hall, the SYX. There's a couple of, <clears throat> I think, NIL opportunities coming up. Yeah. Are, are you the. Do you see yourself as the point person for NIL? Uh, is there somebody who sits in an office and gauges who needs what? Yeah, certainly no. I, I can't. I can't do that, and I don't do that. Um, but I am trying to circulate the conversation to understand for everybody in Buckeye Nation, the city of Columbus, the state of Ohio, to normalize NIL because it's not going anywhere and it's a critical part of our recruiting. And we've had a lot of people who have embraced it. And because of that, we're, we're, we're starting to build some momentum here in recruiting. Um, and, but we're going to need more and more help. That's just the way it is. And um, so I've you know, tried to do the best I can to, again, normalize the conversation and help our guys with opportunities. Not that I can directly do that, but by talking to folks and let them understand that this is okay. This is something that, you know, is important to our program, um, is part of my job now. Luke Fedlam indicated to me that he 
he thinks by late summer we may have some congressional involvement. Do you think there's guardrails or more enforcement or whatever you want to call it coming? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I think the biggest struggle that, that a lot of us have, I know that I have, is when we're talking about something like this, and there are other things like this right now in college football, there's really nothing to compare it to. There's no benchmark. There's no precedence for something like this. And that makes it hard because sometimes you don't know where you're going. But I do know that some sort of guardrails, like you're saying, um, around this would certainly help. Western band, are you involved? Uh, will you play an instrument? Do you sing? I, I leave the uh, I leave the playing instruments to Coach Mick. He's unbelievable on the drums, so uh, I cannot play a musical instrument. Although I'd love to, I just don't have a lot of time to learn how to play a musical instrument. I don't think I'm going to sing. I might get up on stage or you know or something like that and have some fun, but uh, I don't think I'll be singing. I, you'd have to ask the coaches. I'm not sure. I'm trying. I'm trying to stay in the middle of the field. It's not easy to do. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> How do you think uh, Coach Hartline's come along with this offensive ball? Well, I think first off, on, on you know uh, the offensive side of the ball, um, you know the only way to really allow them an opportunity to, to um, you know progress is to kind of take a step away. I think. It's hard when you're in that situation. I've been in that situation before, and the first thing you ask is, "What, what, what would you? What, what does the coach expect me to do here?" As opposed to what's best. And so uh, I think they've been navigating that well. Certainly, he and Justin, um, you know, work well together. They're both both very bright. Um, you know, Keenan, Corey, um, you know, Tony. I mean, it's a good group in there, and they know that they know the system, which is great. Um, but a big part of that is how does the system, you know, adapt to this group? Because this is a different group than. Uh, that we had last year, and every year it changes. So, um, really bright group, and and I think you know it's been great to see the new dynamic in place. Right in front of Justin Holbrock, WCMH. Going back to them, if you think about a player who has a really good spring or a good spring game, especially in the ones because of injuries, how do you balance that with the immediate of what might be offered somewhere else this season, and building them and being part of that depth and being part of this to stay around? Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I don't think there's a hard and fast answer to that. I think you, you have to take all the things into consideration and you try to do the best you can. But uh, I think you're, you're identifying all the, the things that come into play when you're having these conversations. And uh, if it was just, you know, clear cut, it would make it a lot easier. But there's a lot of things to consider. How weight do you put on how a guy plays in front of 50,000 people on yeah. this one day as opposed to the totality of it, It's a piece of the puzzle, yeah, for sure. I mean, we've had guys who... Um, you know, have gone out and played really, really good in that game and um, not really had great careers. And then other guys who have really uh, played poorly in that game and had great careers. Um, and then, but I'd say the majority of it, it's a pretty good indication of how they're going to handle themselves in a pressure environment. Uh, front row right, Austin Ward, uh, Rivals, the podcast. Right, I know it's 13 practices and uh, tight end is a developmental position, but has anything that Jelani did in the last six weeks changed your expectation for what he could give this year? I think he's got a lot of potential. I think we can see that. The, the tight end position is, is such a developmental position. And I think he's, he's embracing that, which is the best thing he can do. Um, because that, that position just doesn't happen overnight. And the more he embraced that, um, the better. Because he's got a good group there. You know, Cade's certainly the leader of that group. But you know, G and Joe both have had really good springs. And I think they're really going to help us. Uh, they're going to see us in 12 and who knows, even in, maybe even 13 at times next year. Um, but he's got, he's got a lot of people there he can look up to to learn how to do it. Um, and he's got a lot of potential. I mean, to, to think about a guy that we've had at that age come in with this much talent, I don't know. I don't know if, I've, I, if we've had one since I've been here. If you had to play a real game on Saturday, you would show in 12? What's your confidence level in, in that if you, right now with what you've got? You said Joe and G, but yeah. maybe we'll rotate between the two. What was your confidence level in that? How would it look? You know, I don't know if I'd say 50-50 right now. Uh, one of the things we like to do is take everybody on offense and, and rank them and then figure out 
you know, based on everybody on the offensive side of the ball and then maybe a few others like in recruiting and then take all the total rankings and then we, we come up with numbers to figure out who, who are the most valuable guys, who do we think the best players are. And if it's clear cut that there's four or five receivers, you know, in the top 11, then clearly you need to be in 11 more. If we start to see those tight ends move up on the list, then it's probably closer to 50-50. Not that that's hard and fast, but that's something that, that we like to do um, just to kind of get everybody's opinion on it. And we want to put the best players on the field and try to adapt from there. But 12 does give us some, um, some things that 11 doesn't. Right next door, Kim May on three, let him in a row. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Uh, back to Tristan Jebbia. If this was August and you just told us what happened to Devin Brown, yeah. is it thank goodness that Tristan Jebbia is here? You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. And then, and then how has he impressed you on the field? What has stood out about him just playing? Uh, maturity, um, just his approach uh, in the meeting rooms. And like you said, yeah, I mean, this is this is real right here. It's things like this happen. And the cool thing is we get Lincoln coming in the summer too. So, um, you know, he's going to have to pick things up fast. But, you know, I don't know, remember the last time we had four guys where we feel like, okay, we got some good depth in that room. Um, yeah, I've been impressed with his approach. I, you, you, you can tell that he's played in games. The decisions are quick. The ball comes out quick. Um, and he's got a, a mature approach to him. Two other quickies. Uh, when, when you're talking about the offensive line and where it's state right now, is it just is it mistakes that are happening? Or are you or, or are all dealing with some situations where maybe a guy isn't good enough? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, how do you draw the line there? And, and making a lot of mistakes is not good enough too, right? Yeah, right. and you have to identify what it is. You know, is it um, – is it just lack of reps? Um, is it the coaching? Is it the scheme? Or like you said, is the player just not good enough? And those are the decisions that we have to make as, as a staff. And that's where the evaluations come as you watch the, the spring cut-ups. Because when you're in the day-to-day -day practice, you're kind of in the forest and, and you can't really see the trees. You, know, you just see one or two reps. And that's not really an accurate evaluation of what you're seeing. So we'll kind of go back through, watch them here, and then and try to do the best we can. I don't think that it's a situation where, you know, we just don't have good enough players. I don't think that's the case. I just think that we need to continue to play. They need to get more and more experience. and They need to learn what it is to be a starter. It's one thing to be in the twos and go against the twos on defense every day in practice and not really have to play as much in a game. It's another thing on third and five with the game on the line, you got to go block the best defensive end in the country or else we lose the game. It's a whole different feel, and there's a maturation there. And with that in mind, my, my other quickie is, do you, do you tell Jim Knowles, hey, throw the rain bucket at him? I mean, on Saturday. I mean, you understand what I mean? I yeah. mean, how, how do you – because you want a true evaluation leaving the spring, I would think, about how guys handle pressure. Yeah, uh, it's a little – et cetera. Yeah, but, it, but also you want to find out, like, can he physically do it? Because once you start getting too schematic, it's like, well, he thought it was going to be this and it was that, or he got confused here. And, but that's a big part of the play in the position, too. You have to be able to think on your feet. You got to be able to identify information and take the – game plan to the field so a little bit but also like physically can the player do it whether it's at the line or any other position okay. yep. That's answered. just a couple more front row bill rebellious columbus dispatch Brian, especially with devin being out all eyes are going to be on kyle can you kind of give your assessment of where he is um, and just how big this is for him on Saturday? yeah it's it's another step in the um in his progression i think uh, he's done some good things this spring um again brings um, you know, three years of experience under his belt here. So he knows the offense. You know, he does a great job in the meeting, uh, able to take concepts to the field. Uh, he's made some really nice throws. He's um, accurate. Um, and, you know, he's shown the ability to lead the team down the field to score. So, um, again, another great opportunity for him to – and, and with, some of it has been with, you know, new receivers, you know, um, talented receivers, but, but new receivers. Um, and so a great opportunity for him to go out there and put that on the field and, and feel like, okay, I got a game in the shoe under my belt, even though it's a spring game. Uh, he's obviously started the active game a couple of years ago. He, he says he's night and day better than he was then. I mean, how comfortable would you be if he is the guy right now and you had to go play a game with him? Well, I, you know, it, it's hard to say right now um, because there's still so much more to go here. You know, um, I don't think anybody's really ready to play right now. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of keep building and keep growing and, 
you know, see where we're at in August. Um, because in the off season, these guys get an opportunity to get bigger, stronger, watch the spring cut ups, uh, you know, throw on their own, things like that. And then we have all the practices in August. So um, we don't have to worry about playing a game right now. So we'll just keep working. You just really want to see you're, either you're excited about them or you're curious how they're going to do in the uh, big environment on Saturday? Uh, mostly the guys who probably haven't had as much game experience. So whether it's guys in a program that uh, haven't quite been on the field yet, like you know some of the linemen, um, you know, Kenyatta Jackson hasn't played a whole bunch but had a really good um, you know, spring so far. Um, you know, seeing guys like Davison out there who haven't played here at Ohio State before, although he's played in games before, just kind of seeing the guys that maybe we haven't seen, um, or um, you know the young guys, the freshmen who, um, again, you see them in practice, you have an idea of what they can do, but it'll be fun for everybody else to see it. And final question: Second row right, Doug Lane, Marines, Cleveland. You guys keep talking about ranking these players and all their podcasts waiting to happen, man. You guys just need to record your meetings. God, it's so good. <laughs> a couple housekeeping things. The Devin injury, is it like a, was it a thing that was ongoing and you, and you had to get it taken care of or did something happen? Something so, happened. Something happened. Yeah. Do you expect that he will be able to throw this summer? Oh, yeah. With receivers? Yeah. Like all that, and he'll be definitely ready to go by August. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He should have a, a pretty much a full summer. Yeah. What will your play calling involvement be on Saturday? Um, I'll be on the headset and just kind of going through it. We'll go through the game plan and what we want to show, what we want to do in the game, and then um, you know let Brian call it, and I'll kind of be right there and um, and we'll you know I, I won't be you know probably have the play sheet in front of me or anything like that and go through it situationally. Let Brian do that, um, but I'll be right there and and we'll probably huddle some, so I'll be able to kind of relay some of that information to the quarterback. And then last thing, the talking about the recruiting momentum and announcement of the, the, another collective today. You guys signed a really good class in December, right? Yeah. But there was also, it felt like, you know, maybe some things that could have happened but didn't. How, are, how have your feelings about your ability to, to recruit the way you want to changed, evolved, anything between December and now? Um, I, I just think, you know, we have to adapt like we've talked about. Uh, I think we're doing that. Um, I also, you know, recognize that the truth is when you don't sign a big class, your rankings aren't as high because the quality of the guy that we brought in was very high. But the reason that we didn't sign as many guys is because guys didn't enter the transfer portal. So, um, that's just the truth. And so I don't know. I, I just, I think we're going to sign a big class here, which is great. Um, but I also want to sign a quality class, which we're doing. Um, but I also think that we're in better place to compete uh, for some of the bigger guys in the country. Hey, Jerry, can I ask real quick? Uh, are you disappointed that the uh, wherever that group is has opted to kick the can down the road a little bit on letting basically everybody who is on staff coach or be involved in coaching? I, I, I mean, is that disappointing to you? I mean, what's just your take on it? Um, there's a lot to work through there. I think there's there's a majority of coaches that would like to see, um, you know, more flexibility for the coaches um, to do um, work on the field in practice, not so much in the game, but but uh, in practice. But uh, there's a lot that comes with that. IAWP issues and recruiting that we got to make sure that we clear up. Um, and there's a lot that goes with that, labor laws and, and things like that. So um, I think that there's there's a push for it, but at the same time, I know that those things aren't easy. And I'm of the opinion that sometimes right now, more than anything, less changes is, is the better. Um, so we've had so many changes and it takes us a long time to see the effects of all these changes, you know? So what would the effects of that be? Um, not that I'm saying, I don't think it's a good idea, but there's a lot that comes with these decisions.